Hi Bobcats! In this video we're going to see how pressure affects the solubility of a solute. Our objective is to use Henry's Law to do calculations about the solubility of a gas. Solids and gases exhibit different behaviors for solubility and temperature, and that same pattern follows over for solubility and pressure. For solids, solubility is generally not affected at all by pressure, whereas with gases, solubility increases with increased partial pressure of that particular gas, and this is governed by an equation known as Henry's Law. Henry's law shows the linear relationship between the partial pressure of a gas and its solubility in a solvent. The equation says that the solubility is equal to a constant, which is known as the Henry's law constant, times that partial pressure. So the capital S stands for the solubility of the gas and it's typically expressed in some sort of concentration units such as molarity. P sub G is the partial pressure of the gas over the solution, and K is our Henry's Law constant. Every combination of a solute and solvent has a different number for Henry's Law, for the Henry's Law constant. And this is truly a linear relationship, so as the partial pressure of the gas increases, the solubility of the gas increases as well. And additionally, because it's linear, if the pressure doubles, the solubility doubles. If the pressure increases by a factor of 10, the solubility increases by a factor of 10. This graph is another way of representing this relationship. The vertical axis is the solubility, the horizontal axis is the partial pressure of the gas, and the equation for the line is that the solubility of the gas is equal to a constant, the Henry's Law constant, times the partial pressure. One of the techniques that scientists do all the time is that they try to fit their numerical data to some sort of a standard curve, with a line being the easiest form to work with. Um, in fact, before computers could crunch numbers and do curve fitting to parabolas or exponential functions, scientists would actually go through the process of calculating various um, derivatives of their data in order to try to find a linear fit because lines were by far the easiest curve to try to match. And it turns out that very often as we do these manipulations and come up with some sort of linear form, the slope of that line has some sort of inherent meaning. For instance, with um, a graph of the mass of a sample versus the volume of the sample, the slope of that line would be numerically equal to the density of your sample. In the 1142 lab, you'll see this in things like the Beer's Law lab, where the slope of the line from your Beer's Law plot has um, a, a, is a characteristic of your sample that's known as the molar extinction coefficient. Or when you do the kinetics experiment, the slope of the line will be equal to your rate constant. Since we know that there's this linear relationship with Henry's Law, we can work problems like this. A sealed carbonated soda has a partial pressure of carbon dioxide of 4.0 atmospheres at 25 degrees Celsius. The concentration of carbon dioxide in the soda is 0.14 molar. Calculate the Henry's Law constant for CO2 in water at 25 degrees C. I'm going to make a little mark here because that is the first part of the problem. That data that we're given initially allows us to calculate the Henry's Law constant. 
then there's a second part to this problem. And let's mark that one in purple. Find, find the concentration of carbon dioxide in the soda after the bottle is opened, and it equilibrates at a partial pressure of 3 times 10 to the minus 4 atmospheres. So that's a second problem. In, with the second problem, the partial pressure is 3 times 10 to the minus 4 atmospheres, and we're asked to find what the concentration of the soda in the bottle is. So let's tackle this first question. How can we find that Henry's Law constant? Well, the solubility is equal to the Henry's Law constant times the partial pressure of the gas. If we rearrange this equation to find the Henry's Law constant, we would divide both sides of the equation by P. So if we divide by P and divide by P, we'll get the Henry's Law constant by itself. And my eighth grade math teacher, Mr. Wilhelm, never let us write an equation with the variable we solved for on the right, so I feel compelled that I have to flip this equation around and say that K is equal to the solubility divided by pressure. So up in the top for the solubility, let's see, we were told the concentration of CO2 is 0.14 molar. Down in the bottom for the partial pressure of the gas, it's given as 4 atmospheres. So if I run those numbers through a calculator, I will take 0.14 divided by 4, and that gives me a number for this constant of 0 0.035, and the units are molarity per atmosphere. So that's the Henry's Law constant for this problem. The second part of the problem said, all right, use this constant that you just found to figure out what the concentration of CO2 will be in the soda after the bottle's opened and the partial pressure of CO2 in the atmosphere has dropped to 3 times 10 to the minus 4 atmospheres. So we know that the solubility is given by the Henry's Law constant times the partial pressure of the gas. In the first part of this problem, we found that the Henry's Law constant is 0 0.035 molar per atmosphere. And we are told that the pressure is 3 times 10 to the negative fourth atmospheres. So if I run that through my calculator, I get an answer of 1.05 times 10 to the minus 5. For units, we have atmospheres and divide by atmospheres, so the atmospheres cancel out with the divide by atmospheres, and the only unit left is molarity. In terms of significant figures, well, the Henry's Law constant only had two significant figures. And our pressure, if you go back and look at the actual statement of the problem, had two significant figures. So I really should round this to the second significant figure, which would be in that first decimal place. The 5 says we round up, so it'll be 1.1 times 10 to the negative 5 molar. This clicker question asks us about the conditions that are best for dissolving the maximum amount of a solid in a liquid. So we've got two different types of conditions to consider, temperature and pressure. With solids, their solubility increases as the temperature goes up. So if we want to dissolve the maximum amount of a solid, we're looking for high temperature. And as far as pressure goes, the solubility of solids is generally independent of pressure. And so in this case, it's going to be the statement that pressure doesn't matter, which pops up in two of these answers. So we just need to see which one is paired up with high temperature. And so the best answer to this question is F. 
this clicker question is very similar to the last one. We're looking for the best conditions for dissolving the most possible gas in a liquid. If you'll remember back for gases, the solubility trend with temperature is that the solubility drops as the temperature increases. And if we're looking at the pressure trend, the pressure trend is given by Henry's law, which is a linear relationship, an increasing linear relationship. So if we want the most gas dissolved in a liquid, we're looking for the lowest temperature and the highest pressure. So let's see, that is going to be answer B. Our objective for this slide was to use Henry's Law, and we did that both numerically and qualitatively.